Now look, I don't know how cool you think your wings are, but they definitely can't do this. So this is called a co-flow wing. Um, and basically what it does is it blows air out of the leading edge and sucks it back in pretty close to the trailing edge. Um, and the purpose behind that is we're creating our own boundary layer. So it delays stall, um, reduces drag, and helps us get uh, higher lift coefficients. So you can see each wing is divided into four sort of segments here. Um, there's some additional ones just to uh, hold the pivot points for the ailerons and the flaps here. Um, but basically each one of these segments has a little 30 millimeter EDF right in this sort of area. And there's some internal ducting that uh, sucks the air in at the back here and sort of constricts it down to that 30 millimeter fan area. Um, and then it blows it back out up here at the, uh, the leading edge. This wing is entirely 3D printed. This is sort of a new thing for me. Um, I used pre-foamed PLA filament. I've just found it a lot easier to work with than uh, the actively foaming stuff. And 3D printing was sort of a trade-off because while it is pretty heavy, this thing is going to end up with a cube loading of around 14. Um, which is quite substantial. Uh, there's no real good way to get all that complex internal geometry uh, that wouldn't take either a lot of weight or just a lot of time with anything else. So beyond the wing itself, which is the main thing we're testing, we have a whole airplane to support it. Starting up front, we've got a fairly substantial motor. This is a Sunny Sky something or other. Um, we got a 100 amp ESC right here. We're running on two four cells, two 3000 milliamp hour four cells, because it's what I had on hand. I've got some sort of carbon fiber landing gear here with a 3D printed mount and some uh, Dubro shock absorbing wheels. Up in here I've got the uh, sort of retaining clips for each wing, so these just keep the wings from sliding in and out. You can see i got a carbon fiber tube in the center section here, and then the wings just have stub spars which slot into that tube. So the spars are glued to the tip of the wing, and the rest of the wing is just slid onto the spars. So if I ever need to make any changes, I can just take this root rib right here, which is actually clamped on. And so I can just unclamp this rib and then slide anything off if I need to and uh, replace it. These root rib uh, spar holder things also have a pretty substantial structural member that goes down and interfaces with the landing gear plate. And it just helps to distribute the load from the landing gear straight up into the spars. The batteries are also right on top of that plate, so that helps. Of course, to actually get data on how this thing performs, I've got a flight controller on board. So we've got an airspeed sensor right here, which runs all the way out to this pitot tube, which is uh, removable so it can flop around and not get broken while I'm transporting it. And then you just slot it in for uh, flight operations. The flight controller itself is a Matek H743 wing. And I've also got a GPS back here as well. So with all those avionics, I should be able to get an estimate of where the airplane is pointing and where its velocity vector is pointed. And using the differences between those two, I can figure out what the angle of attack of the airplane is. The flight controller also has accelerometers, so I can measure the G-load. And I should be able to generate uh, CL versus alpha curves, um, just based on flight data. Moving towards the back of the airplane, it's pretty normal up until this thing. So this is actually a pitch thruster. There's an outlet on the top and on the bottom right here. And the reason why I have this is that on other circulation control or boundary layer control stuff that I've done in the past, I found that uh, if you have any power dependent uh, moments that happen, for example, with the FLUX Mark II, which was one of my demonstrator planes, I had uh, trailing edge blowing down at an angle over flaps that were deflected. And uh, whenever I gave that thing power, I'd like to pitch down really hard. Um, and so I was having to hold a lot of back elevator just to keep the thing uh, from nosing over. And the slower the airspeed was because the elevator was less effective, but the uh, pitching moment was constant because the thrust out of the back was constant more elevator I need basically. If you're gonna have a pitching moment that depends on thrust and not the actual dynamic pressure coming over the aircraft, you should probably have some way of countering that moment that's also based on thrust so that your risk of losing pitch authority at low air speeds, low dynamic pressures is low. So this of course is its own 30 millimeter EDF which has its own little NACA inlet on the bottom of the fuselage. And then it literally just has a pair of butterfly valves that either let the flow out the top or the bottom. Now I could have had, you know, two fans and just routed the exhaust directly from the fan out and turned on each fan. But the problem is I'm actually out of channels on the flight controller. And here's a demonstration of all the controls. So we've got elevator. You can see that also moves the valves. We got roll control. We have flaps. 
Of course, we've got rudder and throttle. And then we have the CoFlow stuff. So when I turn this dial on my transmitter, this is basically directly linked to the CoFlow. I should mention that this thing also has flight stabilization so I can get it tuned and then get some nice steady level passes for good data. So this is the transmitter I've been using for the past pretty much ever. Um, and so we've got throttle, elevator, aileron, and rudder, which take up the first four channels. We've got that uh, co-flow control, which takes up the sixth channel. Um, so the fifth channel is where all my switches go on. And so I actually have 18 separate switch positions. So I've got this guy, which has three positions. This is the arming switch which has two positions. And then uh, this is manual, stabilized, and then auto-tune on a momentary. Um, so all three switches go on to channel five. Um, so basically it's just uh, sort of a muxing scheme. So um, these switches each add a different offset value to that channel. And then in software, I just use the modulo operator to sort of take away those offsets and sort of demux the signal. Um, so if we go down here, we can see here's a couple different switch positions that I have um, just decoded. So I think the bottom one here should be, oh, nope, never mind, that's the top one. So this is manual, stabilized, and then momentary um, auto-tune. Go back up there, uh, flaps, or I think this is flaps off, and then mid flaps, and then full flaps. Um, so it all works, and no matter what configuration you put any of those switches in, um, they always display the correct value here. So it took a little while to get right, but it seems to work. So let's talk goals for this project. Um, I think if we get an increase in maximum lift coefficient at all, um, I'm gonna say that it's, it's working, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a success. Um, I think the criteria for this project, uh, the success criteria are going to be that the increase in lift coefficient from the system offsets the increase in weight um, that is incurred by the system. And so the result would be a net lower stall speed. That's our goal is to have a lower stall speed than we would without having the co-flow system in here and without having all that extra weight in the aircraft. This foil is probably around, I think, 16.5%. I just took a NACA something or other that had a good bit of camber on it and then I scaled it vertically until the, uh, the EDF would start to fit inside it. And so I think CL max for that is probably like 1.3 to 1.5. So we're gonna have to be pushing a maximum CL of like three uh, with this co-flow to be able to achieve that. And I think that's gonna be well, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, so we're just gonna have to fly it and find out. One thing that'll be pretty cool is I actually have a current sensor that'll be able to measure the, uh, the current and well, I know the voltage, so the total power that the co-flow system consumes. We could try and figure out where it's most efficient and that sort of stuff as well. Besides that, there's uh, no lack of projects. Things are always perpetually on the back burner. And on top of all that, I am now the, uh, the caretaker for not one, but now two classic cars. So uh, that's taken up a good bit of my time, but it, it has been very rewarding. Let's, uh, let's put it that way. I'll see you guys next time.